Coming up next on Hooton's Arkansas Football, highlights from the pivotal ninth week of the high school season, including three conference championship games in Class 5A, the top two ranked teams in Class 4A, and the two AAA title games. We have highlights from Pocahontas to Pine Bluff and from Fayetteville to Star City. It's Arkansas High School Football at its best. Next on Hooton's Arkansas Football. Let's take it to him. You stuck it to him and you won it. This is our time of the year. Hello and welcome to Hooton's Arkansas Football tonight from Marketplace Grill. I've got my chips here and we're going to have some of that famous flaming queso from Marketplace a little bit later in the show. We're glad you've tuned in. We have highlights of about 25 high school games coming up in the next 30 minutes. There were three conference championships in Class 5A. We'll talk about those games a little bit later. We're going to start with the smaller schools in Class 2A highlights are brought to you by First Security Bank Corp. Just gonna be there for the night. It's shorts. Not gonna play the Sunch anymore. We're through after this year. Remember our goals. Let's wipe the slate clean. That's box eye coach John Watson looking for one last sweep of the 5AA before the miners move up to class 3A next season. Mount Ida was standing in the way Friday night, but not for long. The Lions had beaten Boxside two straight years, but on the opening drive, it's Zach Dunlap, 43 yards to the end zone. The junior quarterback for Boxside also completed eight out of 10 passes for 122 yards and a couple of more touchdowns. And the Miners' Vera attack rolled up 274 yards rushing. Boxside can claim the outright league title next week with an expected victory at Cutter Morning Star. Final from the pit on senior night. Boxite 34, Mount Ida 14. From Boxite to Arkansas Baptist, the Eagles playing host to Ola last night, and Ola needing a win to stay in the playoff chase after losing a tough one last week. Ola was up seven to nothing when super team quarterback Bubba Noakes dives in from one yard out for another touchdown. But Baptist would answer, picking up some first downs, chewing up the clock, and on fourth down, Ryan Morrow in stride for the touchdown. That made it 14 to seven, but Ola's running game was too much in the second half, and the Mustangs are headed for the postseason if they beat Episcopal next week. Final score, Mustangs 26, Baptist 21. The Hector Wildcats were looking to sew up the 4AA title last night against Episcopal, and Hector was up 14 to nothing when Episcopal quarterback Jacob Coleman fakes out everyone and sweeps around the end for the touchdown. Coleman would also add a two-point conversion. That would pull Episcopal to within 14 to eight, but that's as close as it would get. Hector's bruising fullback Chris Miranda answers with the touchdown, and the Wildcats win their first league title since 1999. Final score, Hector Wildcats 45, Episcopal 14. Down at Ryzen, the AAA title was on the line between the undefeated Wildcats and all-timer Red Devils. All-timer has athletes who can score on any play, but Ryzen's defense was not kind to the Red Devils on Halloween night. Ryzen's Wayne Wainwright stuffs all-timer's option play, and on offense, Wainwright would catch a couple of touchdown passes from Aaron Terry, one from 34 yards out, this one a 22-yarder. That helped Ryzen torment the Red Devils to a 36 to nothing mercy halftime lead. Ryzen is again the 8AA champs, second straight title for the Wildcats, and the Hootons predict Ryzen is headed to the semifinals with home field advantage through the first three rounds and a possible showdown at Junction City in the semis. Final score, Ryzen 36, all-timer, Nada. From Ryzen in Cleveland County in South Arkansas all the way up to Walnut Ridge now, the Bobcats playing host to number 19, Cross County, and Cross County looking to stay atop the three AA standings with Palestine and Hughes. And Cross County would strike first. Kendall Boykin goes 17 yards for the Thunderbird touchdown, but Walnut Ridge would answer. A 22-yard field goal by Adam Lassiter. Nice kick for the Bobcats. 
but most of the night would belong to Cross County and their quarterback, Aaron Boyles. He carried 13 times for 165 yards, including this long touchdown run. Your final, Cross County 36, Walnut Ridge 9. Every team in our AA Top 10 won last night. Charleston has been number one since the July 4th release of Hooton's Arkansas Football Magazine, and the Tigers have looked the part all season. A win over Pea Ridge next week would give Charleston back-to-back -back one AA titles and start Charleston on a playoff run to Little Rock. Junction City blew out smack over early and late last night. Barton blew out Harding Academy in the second half. Ryzen blew out all-timer in the first half to claim the 8 AA title. And number five, Hector, is your four AA champion and will face a speed team from the three AA in the second round of the playoffs. Number eight, Lafayette County just got by number 41, Horatio, 19 to 16. The Cougars will play host of Gurdon next week for the seven AA West title. Elkins sunk Spring Hill 28 to 20 in a non-conference game at War Memorial Stadium. Hampton rediscovered its offense on Halloween night and doubled Norfolk 28 to 14. If the Bulldogs were better on offense, they'd be plum scary. Boxside starts the second 10, followed by Jesseville and Gurdon. The Go Devils got quite a fight in a one point win over Foreman. Number 14, Augusta travels to Barton next week. That'll decide the 6 AA title. Barton embarrassed Augusta last year 50 to eight. P. Ridge moves up a spot to 15 after beating Lavaca by one point last night on the road. Hughes, Mount Ida, the Glen Rose Beavers, the Thunderbirds of Cross County, and Palestine Wheatley round out the top 20. Now, the United States Marines present the Scholar Athlete of the Week. Little Rock Cathedral Free Everything Safety, Miles Stevens football. loves Bam. to hit people. It's just afterwards, you know, I love seeing the look on the guy's face afterwards when he gets up. You know, it's a bunch of fun. Uh, I just love it. Stevens is also a hitter in the classroom with a 4.0 GPA. He is one of those, you know, rare, rare student athletes that you get, you know, in your career. And he's been a delight to work with. And, you know, he's one of those, one of those players that he gets to practice early and he, you know, he leads late, that, that leads, uh, you know, with a loud voice, it's his actions. And he, he is a leader on that football field and they do look to him uh, for that leadership. Congratulations to Miles Stevens, the well-deserving Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Congratulations, Miles. Thanks. All right, thanks a lot, Joe, and congratulations to Miles Stevens, our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Of course, Cathedral School, now known as Episcopal Collegiate, and next week the Wildcats will finish their season against Bubba Noakes up at Ola. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football. Highlights from Class 3A are next. More of Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by Sonic. And I know we have a championship football team. I can see it from the time you guys were in the seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. Coach Buck James and his Bulldogs tried to make history last night by capturing Star City's first ever conference title. And things were looking good early. A pack of Bulldogs squashed the Red Bugs opening possession. And then Star City puts together a nine play scoring drive featuring running back Nick Tinsley. The senior caught a key pass and ripped off this run into the Fort I secondary. On third and long, it's junior quarterback John Furneaux capping the drive with a touchdown jaunt. Furneau also ran 25 yards for a touchdown in the fourth quarter, but Fordyce pulls off the upset and keeps its slim playoff hopes alive. If Star City wins the eight AAA title, it'll have to do it next week at Dollar Way. Final Fordyce 21, Twinkletown 19. We stay in the one AAA where visiting Gravit took its shot last night at number 15, Prairie Grove. Mason Pinkley bolts 19 yards for the touchdown. Prairie Grove was up 14 to nothing. Then sophomore Robbie Abshire passes to Pinkley and the senior wing back will take off for 76 yards. Another touchdown. Prairie Grove should complete a sweep of the one AAA next week at rival Farmington. Final score, Prairie Grove 35, Gravit 7. The undefeated Pocahontas Redskins had one objective last night, and that was to win their first outright league title in a decade. That meant Pokey had to knock off defending two AAA champion Newport. Can you say ambush? Pocahontas led this thing 29 to nothing in the first half, and quarterback Andrew Bell is going to tackle on a two-yard run. 
Bell lit up Newport, passing for 254 yards and four more touchdowns. Final score, two AAA champion Pocahontas 43, former champion Newport 22. We knew there was a strong group. They've pretty much beaten everybody that we have. Um, and uh, coming into this game, they, they look pretty strong on film. So uh, we, we did pretty good, I think. And here's looking at Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 3A rankings. Prescott is undefeated and plays at Ashdown next week for the 7 AAA title. Central Arkansas Christian is the 6 AAA champ and should play at least a couple of times at home in the playoffs. Kulaski Academy is number 3, then it's Rivercrest. And Star City falls one spot after losing by 1 to Fordyce. The two-time defending state champs are number 6 this week. Then it's Atkins and Waldron. Gosnell will play Rivercrest next week for the 3 AAA title. And Pocahontas moves into the top 10 after thumping Newport. Ozarks number 11, there's the Greyhounds. Boonville might play at Shallow Christian in the first round. Ashdown's number 14, then it's Prairie Grove, the Saints. Dollarway will play host to Star City next week with the playoff berth on the line for the Cardinals. Then it's Oak Grove, Osceola, and Greenland to round out the top 20. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football, Class 4A highlights, including number one, Harrison against number two Greenwood from South Sebastian County. Highlights of that one and more are next. You're watching Hooton's Arkansas Football. More of Hooton's Arkansas Football brought to you by Big Red Fina. And we start our 4A coverage at number five Greenwood where the Bulldogs played host to number one Harrison. Harrison would strike first. Benson Smothers, 45 yards for the touchdown, but Greenwood would respond. Quarterback Micah Fritzy passes to Austin Eford, coming right at you, and three plays later, the Bulldogs would tie it up. Brandon Buckert goes in from two yards out at 7-7, but the Goblins treated Greenwood to a steady diet of Justin McCutcheon on Halloween. The senior fullback carried 34 times for 189 yards. Final score, Harrison 21, Greenwood. 16. We trek down the road to Alma, where Morrillton was still feeling the effects of last week's fourth quarter collapse against Greenwood. Here's the proof. Alma led 20 to nothing in the second quarter and was on the move again. Sophomore quarterback Joseph Madero stepped in at quarterback for the Airedales, had a big night, completed three passes for 96 yards. This one a 20-yarder to Ryan Evans. Madero would pass for a couple of touchdowns and the playoff bound Airedales will take on rival Greenwood next week. Final score, Alma 24, Morrillton 0. Staying in the 4A West, Huntsville traveling to Siloam Springs last night, and the Eagles would score first. Huntsville caps the 90-yard drive with Daniel Neal getting into the end zone. Siloam would answer. Connor Burris powering his way into the end zone, and Siloam Springs would lead at halftime for the eighth time this season. But the Panthers have still yet to win. Final score, Huntsville 24, winless Siloam Springs 18. Number nine, Sylvan Hills playing host to the Mills Comets last night. It was sloppy early. Sophomore Hayden Miller drops the punt for Sylvan Hills. The Comets recovered, but Mills would give it right back to the Bears on the very next play. A little bit later, Sylvan Hills would put it in the safe hands of Hezekiah Smith. He moved from fullback to tailback last night, rushed for 211 yards and three touchdowns. Sylvan Hill should claim a number two playoff seed with the win next week at Monticello. Final score, Bears 27, Mills 6. It was senior night at Pulaski Robinson and the undefeated Senators were playing host to Little Rock Fair. Robinson needing a win to clinch its first conference title since 1990. And the Senators getting it done with defense on fourth down Blake Massey chases down fair quarterback Torrance Flowers. And on the next play, watch Kenneth Moore take off on the sweep, a 40-yard gain, and that would set up Moore, who finishes the drive with a short touchdown here. And the Senators are up 7-0. They go on to cruise in this one. Final score, conference champs, Robinson 30, fair 0. And here's a look at Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 4A rankings. Harrison stays on top. The Golden Goblins win on Halloween night and are the undisputed 4A West champion. Harrison will have home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Batesville is also undefeated. Crossett is the 4A Southeast champion, and Robinson is the Southwest champ. There's Greenwood and Stuttgart. Valonia will likely play host to a first-round playoff game. The Eagles move ahead a win in the rankings. Then it's Sylvan Hills and Alma. Whitehall must beat Mills 
next week to make the playoffs. Greenbrier is number 12 and Arkadelph is 13. Hot Springs Lakeside is in the playoffs for the first time since 1997 with a big win at Malvern last night. Then it's Paragould, Hope. The Leopards will need some help to make the playoffs for the first time in three years. BB's number 18, then it's the Devil Dogs and Fair to round out the top 20. Now, Coleman Derry presents the Coleman Kid of the Week. Smooth senior quarterback Kyle Francis has been a big part of Batesville's phenomenal success this season. Francis is completing better than 70% of his passes, and the Pioneers are undefeated, heading into their showdown with win for the 4A East title. Francis started the season passing for 234 yards and four touchdowns against rival Newport and he has totaled more than 1,300 yards passing despite sitting out the second half of many blowout victories. Kyle Francis, arguably the best quarterback in all of Class 4A and our Coleman Kid of the Week. Congratulations again to Kyle, our Coleman Kid of the Week. Next week, the Pioneers and win a big game up in Batesville and the Hootons Arkansas football TV cameras will be there. Tonight, we're at Marketplace Grill. We've got the chips, the flaming queso from Marketplace Grill coming up in just a minute. And also, we have highlights from Class 5, a bunch of big games in the state's largest classification. Highlights of those are next on Hootons Arkansas football. And we begin our Class 5A highlights with defending state champion Fort Smith Southside at Fayetteville. Number one versus number two, Fayetteville quarterback Woody Wilson to Cedric Logan, 80 yards, first play of the game. Then Southside's cover boy, quarterback John Thomas, tosses a 29-yard pass that Scott Eady's going to take to the house. Southside was up temporarily, 9-7. to seven. Wilson connects with Logan for a 34-yard touchdown. Logan caught three balls last night for 154 yards. Wilson completed five passes for 172 yards before leaving with the sprained knee. Coach Darrell Patton very concerned, but Fayetteville would be all right. Logan returns a punt to the south side 10 yard line and the Purple Dogs now own the number one playoff spot from the west and could post their first undefeated season since 1957. Final score, Fayetteville 42, south side nine. The Bentonville Tigers tried to play spoiler last night against the visiting Russell Cyclones. Russell came out fast, scoring. Nathan Brown finds Lawson Hips for the touchdown. It was 7 0. The Cyclones made it 14 to zip. Brown unloads a 43 yard bomb to Kevin Elliott. Bentonville would bounce back, though. A nine play, 50 yard drive from the Tigers. Tristan Tarks goes in from two to score, and in a wild one. Russell all but wraps up the number four playoff seed from the 5A West. Final score, Cyclones 42, Bentonville 35. The Bryant Hornets needing a win last night at Conway to secure a playoff, but the Wampus Cats were roaring early and often behind its do-all back Kevin Wardlow. He finished with almost 200 yards rushing and four touchdowns, including three in the first half. Conway jumped out to a 24 to nothing lead Bryant would move the ball at will in the second half, but the Hornets turned the ball over twice in the fourth quarter, and the Wampus Cats hold on to win it. Final score, number six, Conway, 37, Bryant, 24. Conway and Bryant are both chasing Little Rock Central in the 5A Central Conference race, and last night the Tigers were at Little Rock McClellan. Central gets it going through the air. Clark Irwin finds Kevin Thornton for a big gain. And that would set up Irwin's touchdown dive to put Central up seven to nothing. A little bit later in the quarter, Mickey Dean goes around the end for another touchdown and the Tigers don't look back. Final score, Central 38, McClellan zero. Trick or treat, the Cabot Panthers playing host to Jonesboro last night with the 5A East title on the line. Cabot not wasting any time. Brandon Wade, he's Cabot's speedster, and he's got a 25-yard touchdown to put Cabot up 7-0. In the second quarter, Jonesboro would answer. Smooth quarterback Jim Harris, 15 yards around the far end. Jonesboro missed its extra point, and it was 7-6. Not to be outdone, Cabot's quarterback, Ryan Catrino, comes back with his own quarterback keeper. That put the Panthers up 14-6, but Jonesboro is tough. Cowan Hudson 
He's a dandy in Jonesboro's backfield. He pulls the Canes to within 14 to 12 late in the half. This one was back and forth. Cabot would mount a drive just before intermission. Catrino hits Wade on the pass, and it's 21 to 12 heading into the dressing room as the Panthers hold on to win and capture at least a share of their third straight conference title. Final score, Cabot 30, Jonesboro 25. Bitten back at home for a big game with El Dorado last night, but watch the big mistake. Punter John Chris Roberts catches the snap and his knee is on the ground. El Dorado gets it and John Johnson would take care of it from there. His touchdown put El Dorado up by 10, 17 to seven, but Benton would come right back with sensational senior quarterback Justin Ray finding John Chris Roberts, redeeming himself with a touchdown catch. That made it 17 to 14. A little bit later, it'll be Ray connecting with Roberts again, down to the seven yard line. That had set up a touchdown run by Ray Put the Panthers up 20 to 17. Ray accounted for almost 300 yards of offense, including 11 passes to Roberts for 145 yards. Final score, Panthers 34, El Dorado 20. Down at Pine Bluff, the Zebras playing host to Camden Fairview in a battle for first place in the 5A South. And coach Marion Glover and the Cardinals soared to an early two touchdown lead, but the rest of the night belonged to the Z's. Pine Bluff scored 35 unanswered points. Senior running back Cedric Hale scored a couple of touchdowns in the fourth quarter. This 25-yarder put Pine Bluff up 35 to 13. On Pine Bluff's next possession, it's Hill again, splitting the defense for a 59-yard streak. And Pine Bluff is headed for a showdown with Lake Hamilton for an outright conference title. Final score, Pine Bluff 42, Camden Fairview 26. Hey, Lionel TD, um, all I was thinking about Coach Jordan fussing at me at practice, and uh, I just made up for it. I did the best I can do. I broke. Let's go. And here's a look at Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 5A rankings. Hello, Fayetteville. The Purple Dogs, 9-0 and, oh, and could be on a collision course for a rematch with Springdale in the semifinals. Of course, Springdale will play at Little Rock Central probably in the second round. Southside will play host to West Memphis in the first round. Look for Cabot to play host to Russellville in the first round and possibly get a rematch with Conway in the second round. There's the Cyclones. Jonesboro will play host to Little Rock McClellan in the first round and a victory could send the Hurricane to Fort Smith Southside in the second round. West Memphis is headed for Southside in the first round. Rogers is the fifth best team in the West, and that probably makes the Mounties a top 10 team. Pine Bluff and Lake Hamilton will play for the 5A South Championship next week. There's McClellan, Fairview, and Benton. The Panthers will play either at Fayetteville or at Conway in the first round of the playoffs. Then it's Bryant, Bentonville, Searcy, Texarkana, and El Dorado rounds out the top 20. It's where you go.